going on guys, KY Nakai the Creative. In today's video, we're gonna be doing a behind the scenes look at a recent shoot that I did with Gymshark. Now that might sound like an echo, that might sound like I've said this before, but this is a completely new project because we were shooting for the power collection that newly released for the company. So you're already familiar with the concept you saw in the video before, which was two teams facing off against each other to find out who could lift the most amount of weight. And in totality, there was over 100,000 pounds lifted in the duration of this challenge. The looking feel I was going for for this particular video is I want it to feel like a reality TV show challenge video. So if you've seen like American Ninja Warrior, American and gladiator shows like that i wanted this strength challenge to kind of function and look a lot like that now that all starts with the pre-planning location scouting is one of the most important things that you want to do especially if you're somebody in the videography space especially if you're shooting for companies you don't actually live in the city that you're shooting the video in so i live in toronto canada and when i go to la i like doing location scouts a day before or a couple days before so i know exactly what lighting i want to bring where i'm going to find camera angles and exactly how i want to organize and do things and look who it is. Howdy doody. What's going on, what's going on? What's up YouTube? So you guys probably know this person way more than I do. This is YouTuber Jason Anthony, who's gonna be helping out on set. And then we got Tyler right over here, who's gonna be helping out as well. What's up guys? And uh, let's actually go do this location scout, cause uh, it's actually kind of nice in there. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do when you're doing location scout is check for ambient light. So especially when you're shooting with gyms and stuff like that, you, and you don't wanna bring brick fixtures, check for a lot of the light that's coming in from the sun. So in this particular location specifically, there's a lot of ambient light coming in from the big window right at the front of the gym, which is gonna help save us putting up a lot of lights to make sure everything is properly exposed. Now, one of the most important things that we used while we were on our location scout was the Artemis Pro app. Now, this is a really cool app because you're able to use any lens and camera combination, actually see what a lot of your shots are gonna look like before you take all the cameras out. Now I just landed just before doing my location scout, so I actually had Jason use Artemis Pro on his iPad to find out which places we want to put people for different exercises, and also where we want to our interview angles and all of the other things and all the other ways that we wanted to shoot and even what kind of lenses we wanted to bring on set. So come on the day, we didn't actually have to go scrambling around looking for equipment. We knew exactly what we were shooting on and exactly how we were going to shoot it. Now kind of following the vibe of having that challenge TV show, we wanted to introduce our host who's going to establish the rules of the actual challenge. Now that's why we had Zach Pern who's actually describing some of the things and how the challenge is going to go, establishing the rules so you understand when things are happening, when things get a little bit higher paced. Now, another thing I really wanted to do is I wanted to get hero shots of each individual athlete. That way you can see a little bit of personality, you get to establish who the characters are going to be in this challenge, and it gives you a way to kind of get you familiar with some of the athletes that are going to be in the video. Now, what we actually ended up doing was we turned off all the lights in the gym and we used a Nanlite Forza 500 as well as a mix panel and a couple of Pavo tubes to actually set up our lighting scenario. Now, if you haven't noticed that all of the red lights are being used to the red team and all of the green lights are being used for the green team and we did that very specifically to make sure that you knew who was on whose team but I'm pretty sure that was obvious if you weren't paying attention. Now in terms of the gear that we actually use for this interview segment showing off those hero shots is we used two Sony FX6s and they were attached onto 24 to 70 Sigma art lenses. Now the way that we did that is we wanted to make sure that we had two different angles so if we wanted to cut things keep things interesting that you did have two separate angles in terms of all the interview shots. Now what we also did as well while getting the hero shots on the Sony FX6 is we had another camera on a gimbal as well so we we got those slow buttery hero shots as you were coming in just so the editing team when we sent it back to the UK had something to work with and they had a lot of footage that they can kind of cut from later on into that day. Now here comes the challenge part not necessarily just the weightlifting challenge but the challenge of actually how we were going to shoot everything. We had about 14 people in one room we had four cameras we had a lot of things going on a lot of moving parts and not only would it be hard to make sure that we didn't get in each other's shots but it was also going to be a challenge to make sure that no one knocked anything over nobody broke anything and nobody got in the way of somebody else's lift. So this is the scenario that we actually ended up setting up for. Basically what we did is we had the red team go while the green team was judging them and the green team go while the red team was judging them. But the cameras that we had on set, we made sure that we had almost as many cameras as people actually working out at the same time. So what we ended up using was two Sony FX6s, a Sony FX3, and also a Sony A7S3. Now all of these were rigged up a little bit differently to make sure that we had an adequate amount and a variety of different shots to send back to the editing team. Where the two Sony FX6s were shot handheld, we had an A7S3 on a gimbal again, just like we did the hero shots, and we also had one more FX3 that was on a handheld held shot but we also had cameras that were doing slow motion as well. Now one of the things that we were briefed on in pre-production is we also needed some assets, we also needed some footage to use for campaigns and different social media ads and things like that at a later date. So I wanted to make sure that not only we had the 24 frames a second footage for YouTube purposes but we were also able to reuse some of that footage for anything from social media ads or any posts that Gymshark was going to use on their social pages or for any other use to be honest. The value of having four different cameras on set means that you could actually do all the settings that you want to do. If you want a camera that could shoot 60 frames a second 
second, 120 frames a second, and 24, because you have three cameras, you can just adjust to make sure all those settings are on the different camera body that you're bringing on set. I'm also gonna make a note and a testament to the Sony line of cameras that have come out in recent years. All of these cameras match really, really well. And even when I watch a lot of this footage back, I can't tell which camera was shot on which one. It's really nice that on the new Sony cameras between the Sony a7 IV, the FX3, A7S3, and the FX6, that all of the footage between all the cameras actually match up very, very well. To be honest, this is a pretty short project. It's a pretty short video, but it did have a lot of impact and it was a cool way to see all of the athletes interact with each other, which you don't see from a lot of companies. Now, one of the takeaways I wanna take back from here is you absolutely need to have a crew to be able to make these things happen. I wouldn't have been able to shoot any of this by myself and just like on other videos, if I try to do this on my own, I would have had a terrible time. Trying to get four different camera angles in 10 minutes while a bunch of people are lifting, there's a lot of screaming and there's a lot of moving parts would be impossible to do by yourself. So making sure that you have a pretty solid crew is a very essential part of making sure that a lot of projects like these when you're working with bigger companies actually ends up happening the way that you want it to. And last thing, if nothing else, I want you to take away that you don't necessarily need to have the more expensive, bigger Sony camera setups. We use a bunch of different cameras in the shoot. Anything from something that was about $6,000, $7,000, right down to something that's half as much, and a lot of those cameras matched up very, very well. Now, we did have the same filter, the Tiffin Black Pro, now we did have the same filtration, the Tiffin Black Promise that was on every single camera, and it was really cool to see in the final product that all of these things matched up very well, which is a testament to the new Sony line of cameras, a testament to the fact that the S-Log3 and a lot of these cameras all match up very well, and I'm sure S-Cinetone does too, but we didn't use that for this video. And lastly, who I had my money on was the green team, and I hope everyone on the red team doesn't hate me, but there was a very close margin between the two teams in terms of who won. It was pretty much only about two deadlifts away from another team winning, which is a really cool thing to see that it wasn't such a lopsided competition, but it also was really fun because none of this was fake. There was no faked weights, there was no fake extra exercises, everybody was pretty much going at 100% to make sure that their team won, which actually left people really gassed by the end of the day. But that being said, this is a quick recap of that shoot, the power collection for Gymshark. It's really cool that I got to work with them again, and I hope I get to actually in the future. So if you guys wanna see more things, you wanna see more behind the scenes, or you had more questions about this shoot, make sure you like and comment down below. Make sure you leave some feedback in terms of how you wanna see more content, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.